Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Tuesday, October 18th, 2016. Coming to you from yet another hotel room. So between vacations and business trips, I've been spending quite a bit of time in these lately. Can't wait to be back in the man cave. I am in a large town slash small city called Kelowna, which is just north of Canada's only official desert region. And uh, tomorrow headed off to Kamloops, which is a bit further north, before arriving back home on Thursday. So uh, bear with me if there's some issues video-wise. Uh, trying to do my best with the lighting here. Looks like I got punched out here. At least what I can see, I've got this big circle, which I don't seem to have when I look in the mirror. But anyways, all good. I assure you, I haven't been in a bar fight, or any fight for that matter. But uh, let's get on with this, guys, and jump right into VR. Starting with Arcane Studios, the devs behind the game Dishonored. Their level designer, uh, Christophe Carrier, he talked about a possible VR game, you know, either directly Dishonored or based on it. He didn't elaborate in that respect. But he talked about some of the mechanics in Dishonored that he felt would be a nice natural fit for VR, namely their mirror or teleportation uh, locomotion. That's something that they already have in the game. And the first thought was, no, not just teleportation. And I think that would be terrible for a stealth game. Thankfully, there will be other forms of locomotion. That was just apparently one of them. I kind of think for stealth-based games, just like cockpit games are such a nice natural fit for seated VR, I think stealth games have so much potential, maybe not as much as a cockpit for seated, but a lot for room VR. And if somebody could nail down the mechanic, imagine a game like Thief, right? Being redone in VR, but nailing room scale and the locomotion aspect. I think you would have a freaking hit on your hands. I think it would be just absolutely amazing. I'm surprised nobody's done anything like that yet. Um, I, actually, now that I, I mention that, I can think of one or two, but something big, luscious, commercial, massive, high quality would be amazing. So we can only hope. So yeah, that is, uh, you know, when he was talking about uh, a possible VR game for Arcane Studios. Next up, Squanch Tendo releasing their accounting VR game. So person evaluating the game on Upload VR basically said it's approximately 20 minutes in length, uh, but funny as hell and free. So I'll probably check that out. That'd be the nice kind of... Uh, how can I check that out when I don't have my VR HMD, you idiot? Which I should have brought. But anyways, uh, yeah, because I think my laptop is just basically capable of doing it. But I didn't, so moot point. So no, I will not. I will try it when I am back in Vancouver. Next up, Eagle Flight. Got a 7.5 out of 10 review. Upload VR. And thankfully, it doesn't use teleportation as was speculated at one time. They've opted to go with the smooth flight mechanic. There's a single player campaign. You're steering with your head via your HMD. And there's multiplayer for some replayability similar to kind of capture the flag. PlayStation VR has some titles this week. Uh, Pixel Gear, and few of you are going to love this, and I'm looking at you, Tom, uh, a wave-based shooter. So add that to your collection, Tom, with luscious Minecraft pixel-style graphics. Sports Bar VR, Tethered, this one kind of sounds cool to me. It's a strategy game from Developer Secret Sorcery that sees you controlling a clan, gathering resources, defending them, you know, as they gather resources, especially at nighttime when all the nasties come out to play. And Windlands, of course, same as the PC. All right, for the news, Tilt Brush uh, is starting to get used as a tool for prototyping levels. So uh, a dev for uh, a game called Superhero, and a Dream is the name of the dev, used Tilt Brush to create the prototype level. And what he says is, 
unlike storyboard and traditional, you know, the, the 2D mock-ups of levels, with Tilt Brush, the zoom feature, and of course its 3D VR nature, you're able to prototype storyboard style and kind of closely mimic the animation, like the movement in the final game using that zoom feature. So that's a pretty cool and innovative way to use Tilt Brush, uh, especially for that. Like I could see concept artists using that for all kinds of stuff, backgrounds, obviously set pieces. So that just seems to be the application that keeps on giving. Now I realize it's not a full-blown development tool. Uh, you know, you can't create something and with the press of a button, simply port it. Uh, no, I realize that, but it's innovative stuff like this that just at least makes you take notice that, look, this isn't Microsoft Paint we're talking about. Uh, hell, I would argue, you know, it's probably going to prove as useful as Deluxe Paint with animation did back in the day. So next news story, uh, Michael Abrash. Now I talked about his Connect 3 predictions for the future for as far as we're concerned. Well, apparently he's made these predictions the last few years at the Connect conferences. So there was an article uh, on uh, Upload VR looking at those predictions and seeing if any had come to pass. And I thought the results were kind of cool. So the first prediction that VR will spur a massive acceleration in graphics, uh, the author and myself felt that absolutely with the NVIDIA and AMD releases the last four months, you know, we've seen some really powerful cards, obviously the 1080, the new Titan, and the more importantly, the accelerated virtual reality features of both cards, Liquid VR, of course, and NVIDIA's version of that for added acceleration of virtual reality. So when that starts getting used, these are amazing cards, and we are going to see some really cool stuff. I think when they get the foveated rendering, but I'm jumping ahead of myself, we'll talk about that in another news piece. Suffice it to say, we're going to see some pretty cool stuff. Actually, this news piece right now. So his other prediction, eye tracking, playing a big part in the future of VR. Now, you can look at some of these predictions, obviously, and say, well, it's natural. That's natural progression. And absolutely, can't disagree with that. The eye tracking one is a little more specific, though. And, you know, I think he was right about that, as does the author. We even have an HMD manufacturer with their product FOVE, FOVE, which, you know, its main function is to provide foveated rendering. And that's, again, for anyone not in the know, kind of mimics the human eye in terms of having focus on what you are directly looking at and stuff out to the peripheral, you know, being progressively lower resolution and not as sharp and in focus. That's going to speed up graphics uh, and requires eye tracking to be used effectively because you've got to be able to see the position of the eyeballs to do the foveated rendering. So very cool there. And then his last one from a few years ago was VR will grow to include all senses. And while we're not there yet, that's again definitely something moving forward we're going to have. We do see the work today being started in all these cool areas. The haptic feedback in hand controllers, body suits, gloves, uh, you know, all kinds of peripherals with, in terms of haptic feedback to provide that tactile sensation, right, of real world objects and the sense of touch for different types of objects and different types of temperatures, right? Heat, cold, etc. Also the audio. And it's actually funny that this came out. The timing was actually pretty cool because we're going to talk about an acquisition that actually ties directly into improving the audio for virtual reality. Next news story. This is pretty cool. It's on Upload VR. It's a 360 degree video. I watched the regular 2D version of it, but it looks really cool. And what they do is they cover the 40 years of basically cinematic VR history. So not necessarily exactly virtual reality, but 
concepts, right? Movies like Total Recall, The Matrix, uh, Tron, etc. You know, providing that alternate reality. So it ties into VR. The only one that I thought was was curiously missing, and before I talk about that one, there's also some lesser known films, some of which I hadn't heard of that actually sound pretty damn good that I want to check out. Mind Warp, Dark Drive, and World on a Wire, which was a 1973 film, very close to Westworld, which, by the way, I was shocked wasn't on this list. It was also a 1973 movie. I would have put that on this list right alongside World on a Wire. But those are movies I'm going to chase down, and uh, I'm going to have the full link, obviously. Check it out yourselves. There's about 25, 30 titles, probably some really cool entertainment in there that kind of quasi deals with VR. So here's this news piece I was alluding to earlier. Uh, Razer has acquired this week THX, and THX is you know, another one of those George Lucas projects that he unleashed on the world that, you know, did so much for cinematic audio. And I'm no audiophile or audio buff. I appreciate it, but no expert by any means. So if I overstepped by saying that was a massive contribution to a layman like me, it comes across as one because I remember being always so impressed when a movie had THX and the theater had the tech in place to play that. I mean, it was amazing. And they've done this acquisition to, quote unquote, play a leadership role in VR audio. And they make a point about uh, binaural audio. That seems to be all the rage right now uh, in terms of the standard. And it's not that damn impressive by any stretch of the imagination. So what they are going to work on is to up the ante and create real immersive sound environments that don't just sound generic, you know, like the current methods, but really play a key role in VR. And I think it's an important one, not as much as the visual, but, you know, in the same discussion anyways. Now, this next studio group uh, behind that short invasion, which one the, uh, some awards, Baobab Studios. They recently closed their Series B round of funding and managed to raise an additional $25 million. Couple that with the six that they had already, and they have $31 million to put towards their next animated feature projects, which is really cool because I loved Invasion. I thought it was good, and I would love to see something meatier and longer from these guys. Or, you know, if it's a series of cartoon shorts, you know, like the old uh, Looney Tunes style, if they could come up with a series of something, you know, 10 five-minute episodes would be pretty damn cool. 20th Century Fox was one of the uh, funders in that latest group. Next news article, uh, NVIDIA expect that their $139 new and upcoming GTX 1050 Ti is going to be able to hang in VR and, you know, provide a more affordable minimum spec matching card. So 139 bucks. The reason that seems to be a possibility probably has a lot to do, and this was mentioned in the article, that Oculus revealed at Connect 3 their asynchronous space warp technology, which is going to, you know, lower the frame requirement count. And it's basically a reprojection technique and basically enhances it and improves the reprojection. So it's not, you know, true frame rate in that sense, but a technique that's going to allow them to lower the bar a little bit. Now, NVIDIA hasn't committed to that, but they've essentially said, you know, we're fairly confident it will represent the new entry level minimum spec. There's also a 1050 non TI, but that one, no if and buts about it, was not going to meet the minimum requirements. And then the uh, last news story Twitter has made a key hire. Uh, they've hired Greg Goppin and, for VR projects. So, it's really nice to see the social media sites that 
get it. And I'm not a huge Twitter user. I use Twitter to kind of broadcast updates, you know, to the YouTube channel. I use it and I, I do try to check it occasionally. I'm just by no means a heavy user of it at all, right? But uh, to see those social sites, you know, see the writing on the wall that VR is going to play an important role in the future and move towards it is uh, is pretty assuring that, you know, if these companies are going to do it, others are going to follow suit. When VR gets that firmly entrenched, when all these other, you know, types of uses for virtual reality that go beyond gaming that's when we can look at vr and say you know what it has arrived and it's not going anywhere it's going to continue to evolve and we're not quite there yet but damn we are moving in the right direction so super stoked can't wait to go back home massive vr withdrawal as always guys cheers and definitely catch you on the vr flip side